Now, there are several big stories coming out of our nation's capital, both on the domestic and international level. That's, for, that's right. And uh, joining us now, live to talk about some of those issues, we have Pennsylvania Congressman Scott Perry with us. We have a lot to get to this morning, Congressman, so we're going to get right to it. First, the violence in the Middle East where the attacks continue. Now there's a ban on American flights going into Israel. Israel wants that ban lifted. There are folks here in America that want to go there right now. What do you think about the ban? Well, I think it's appropriate that uh, that the FAA takes a look at what's happening, and if it, Israel literally cannot secure the airport, of course, a rocket landed close by. That's of concern. But also, too, uh, there are other options. I know that El Al is still flying into Ben Gurion, and uh, it's a 24 it's a 24 hour deal. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's good to be precautious, especially with what's happened in in, in Ukraine. Uh, you know, we don't want to jeopardize their citizens. We want to make sure they're informed. But I would say also, once they're informed, it's up to them and their carrier if they want to go. Congressman Perry, it's Sherry Christian here. We'd like Sherry. to talk about immigration. Yeah, Good morning, you? sir. Good. Thank you. Back closer to home where we have another border battle of sorts when yeah. it comes to immigration. We have shelters in our area, as you know, slated to accept some of the undocumented children. And there are people upset about that. Congressman, how difficult is it to deal with treating illegal immigrants, especially children, humanely, while also protecting U.S. citizens' rights and needs? Yeah, this is definitely a sticky situation, and I think one of the things that folks are most upset about right now is, is there, there is no information. Uh, this is all based on rumors, even from our offices. We have gotten no confirmation of this, and we can get no answers from uh, the administration about what the, the status of these young people uh, is. And, you know, when we hear statistics coming out of the administration that 75, 76 percent of them are 14 years and older, and most of them are, those are male. We don't know their criminal status. We don't know their health status. We don't know uh, what we can expect for our local schools and how it's going to be paid for and, and which schools are going to. All these are questions that are legitimate. So it is a very sticky situation. I think citizens are right to be concerned and interested. And of course, you know, they've got their children in these schools and they're living in these communities and they're paying for their police. And how does this affect their communities? Uh, you know, it is an issue that we have to deal with. And of course, we want to deal with it humanely. But I say that with uh, tongue in cheek, but we have our own communities to be concerned with and pay for as well. And, uh, and we need to do this, but we have to have the answers. And we don't have any of them right now, so people are frustrated. We'll talk about answers. We're going to get back into some international things now. The, the plane crash, the Malaysian plane crash, yeah. one of the black boxes has been recovered. Most are blaming the Russian separatists. They're denying they shot it down. Do you still question who's responsible? And either way, how should the U.S. be reacting right now? Well, I don't question who's responsible based on everything I've seen in my time in the military. The, the SA-11 is not a shoulder-fired pickup and, and launch uh, a weapon system. It takes significant training, and uh, there's only one place that could have come from, and that is that is Russia. Russia is is giving uh, uh, this equipment or they're operating themselves in the Ukraine and in the area. So there's no doubt in my mind at least where this this came from, and I, I think the time will bear will bear that out. What we need to be doing, I think, as response, it's very much, it's, it's very difficult for Europe to respond as we would because they sell most of their goods to Russia and they get most of the gas from Russia through the Ukraine. So that makes a difficult situation. LNG export needs to be uh, increased quickly. Uh, I think passing the Keystone Life Pipeline and putting the pressure on Russia from a fuel standpoint by alleviating that pressure to the uh, to Western Europe is an important diplomatic uh, measure that we can uh, that we can take. And finally, diplomatic measures uh, uh, through the UN. Uh, those things need to be increased and and, and bring Russia to the, the table and get them out of uh, fueling and supplying these separatists in Russia that uh, either shot this thing down or at least had a part in it. Congressman Scott Perry, as always, we appreciate your time and your insight. And how about next time we get you here in the studio, sir? Yeah, uh, that, that's exactly right. It's hot one down here in Washington, and I heard the weather report. Of course, I know it's going to be hot up there. Watch out for those storms. That's right. Thank you. you